Viewers of Entrepreneurship TV, welcome to this week's part of the legal brief show. As always, we have got a corporate and a commercial lawyer called Cheza Shonywa. She is here to discuss with us in terms of how entrepreneurs can benefit from a legal advice. Cheza, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Cheza, that there's been a recent change to the Companies Act. Now, yes. I would want our entrepreneurs and business people to benefit from understanding what exactly has changed. From your own perspective, what are the major highlights of the New Companies Act? Okay. The New Act uh, repeals the previous Companies Act, and it also repeals the Private Business Corporations Act. Um, and it repeals those two acts. So now you have an act that is now dealing with uh, facilitation registration of uh, businesses. And now in the new act, there's another change where already existing companies are required to re-register their companies. They don't need to change the names. They can do that even in the future to change their own names, but they have to re-register. The existing companies within a period of 12 months from the date the act became effective and the act became effective sometime in february 2020 so they have until february sometime in february 2021 to do the re-registration with the registrar of companies and the aim of the new act is to elevate the legislation regarding businesses or the incorporation facilitation of businesses to at least a global standard. So the aim is to elevate the legislation that is already there to be at least at par with uh, global standards. So those are some of the changes uh, that you can see from the act that is already now in existence. And also now the failure now to re-register uh, your company is that your company might now be removed from the registry or struck off uh, from, the, from the registry. And I think the final change that I will talk about is that the act no longer or doesn't apply to certain institutions. And it makes it clear in the act. For example, your banking institutions, you have your building corporations, uh, you have your microfinance, and you have your insurers. And there are a few more that are actually listed in the Act where the Act no longer applies to them. So now for their registration, their facilitation, it's now regulated uh, through the various enactments that will regulate it be banking, it be insurance, unless specifically expressly stated in the new act uh, or in the enactment the new companies act will not now apply to such institutions thank you very much for that now moving on to a lot of business people and entrepreneurs have grown up knowing only maybe about two commonly known uh companies a public uh, listed company and a private uh, company, are there any specific particular changes to those two well-known companies? That's very true. Mostly if you ask someone, they know about the private um, listed or private limited company, or they know about the public limited company. But now if you look at the other type of companies or entities that can be registered under the new act, you have a company limited by guarantee. You also have a cooperative company uh, that is also registrable under the new act. You also have a foreign company and you also have a private business uh, corporation that can be registered under the new companies. And also like it, a close reading of the act um, will say that you have voluntary registration of partnership agreements where it doesn't give partnerships uh, the, the, 
benefit of being a, an entity, a legal entity, so to speak. But now you have partnerships where now you can register those partnership agreements. So it's about just voluntary registration of partnership agreements. So it goes further than the commonly two known uh, forms of companies. Yes. From what you have explained now, my interest immediately goes to the private business corporation. Yes. What are its requirements? Okay. So now the private business corporation that you have at hand uh, allows for your small to medium business enterprises to register uh, a business. So you have at least one, one individual to 20 individuals can register a private business corporation. You can't be more than 20 individuals. It's one up to 20. So now you have a situation where as long as those individuals comply with the requirements stated in the act, they can now form a private business um, corporation. For example, for you to qualify as a member, the first thing is you have to be an individual. You have to be a person, put, put simply. Uh, you can't be a legal entity. You have to be an individual person who is registering or appearing in your own right and in your own capacity to say, I want to be a member. So then it excludes your legal entities, it excludes your associations or companies or any other association. Then the second part is uh, a minor can even be a member with the assistance of a guardian. So as long as the minor has a guardian assisting them, they can actually be a member of the corporation, private business corporation. And now even now besides that, even your insolvent, uh, <laughs> your un unrehabilitated insolvent can even also become members. But they only need now the letter of their trustees in insolvency to say, you know what, uh, they want to become members of the, of the business corporation. But now the interesting thing about the, the business corporation is this, the private business corporation is this. If an individual, a company, an entity, an association purports to be a member of the private business corporation, they will be jointly and liably, um, they'll be jointly expressly liably uh, and, and liable for the debts of the company. It, despite the fact that their, their incorporation or their establishment is invalid. As I had said before, the only, they, can't be, they can't be members. So, in as much as it's invalid, the membership, but they will still be held accountable and liable for the debts of a company. So now you can't have someone who comes and lies to someone else to say, ah, no, we have this business corporation and uh, let's, uh, can you loan us a certain amount of money? And then it goes on like that. And then on the day of reckoning where they're told you now need to pay those debts, they can't hide behind the fact that, no, I'm not a member in terms of the act. I can't be a member. No, the act still, the act still says they are liable together with the company, as long as that um, membership or the purported membership goes on. So you, even if the private business corporation doesn't have any members, because the requirement it has to have at least one member, even if it doesn't have any members and someone uses that shelf or that company to enter into whatever agreements, they can no longer hide behind the fact that, no, I'm not a member. There are no members in the corporation. The act specifically says they will be liable together with the business. Um, so that's an interesting twist, which uh, the new act actually puts upon the private business corporations. Thanks very much for that, Chedza. To our international viewers watching the show, we're just going to go for a very short break. When we come back, we're going to engage further with Chedza, explaining to us the new companies act.
our viewers across the globe welcome back we still have got Chiedza. she's discussing with us in terms of what are the new changes that have come in with the enactment of the new companies act for me what i've picked in is for those that have got companies that are already registered there is need for re-registration Chiedza, welcome back thank you mm. Chiedza, we have discussed in terms of what are the various companies that are within the Companies Act. Now, I just want to quickly pick from you, briefly ex explain to our viewers what is a foreign company. Okay. A uh, foreign company, it's, it's a company or an association of persons that has been incorporated outside Zimbabwe. Uh, but is now established in Zimbabwe for purposes of conducting business. They still are now required by the new act to register before they commence their business. So that's your foreign company. That one is pretty straightforward. Now, uh, for the benefit of our viewers, I've seen now there is talk of a cooperative company. Would you also help us understand what is a, corporate, a cooperative company? Uh, it's, a, it's a company other than a private company, uh, which has been established. You have to look at its memorandum. It has been established to assist or facilitate um, for the benefit of its members uh, the production uh, or marketing of agricultural produce or livestock. Or its memorandum, its memorandum may also state clearly that it has that it has been established for purposes of selling certain goods to its members. So the memorandum clear should clearly state those two provisions. Uh, then it's for the benefit of its members who are part of the cooperative. So if it states that, then you have a cooperative. Yes. My last question within this segment, Chiedza, is going to focus on, for those that may not have been aware of these changes, yes. and assuming uh, the period of re-registration lapses, do they have any reprieve, or they just have got to make sure that they've registered within the specified time? I, I believe the Act has given uh, individuals enough time uh, because you have 12 months to re-register. If it's then struck off, uh, the best that you can do is go back to now to the Registry of Companies and say which records, the records that you actually have. But in the meantime, we are now in June and we have until February to do the re-registration. So there is still enough time for companies to actually re-register. Mm. Thank you very much, Shedza. For our international viewers, we're just going to go for another second uh, break. We'll be, very, we'll be back very soon. Success for Tel One means success for businesses, government departments, and all our residential clients, bringing into play a digitally enabled society by 2023. Tel One offers super fast, affordable, and dedicated internet services across the country over fiber, copper, or satellite to meet the customer's needs, location, and budget. All of this can be secured with virtual private networks. Cloud services and the data center allow you, our customers, to store, manage, and disseminate all your data in a state-of-the-art private facility. Business talk has become more affordable with our voice over internet protocol. VoIP allows you to make voice calls using any broadband internet connection and has massive potential savings as a cheaper mode of communication, making business processes more efficient and profitable. The use of unified business communication for our corporate clients offers a competitive advantage by managing multiple tools such as phone, video conferencing, email, customer service and more. Stay connected all the time and bring your business up to speed with Tel One. Tell one, bringing you together. Our international viewers, welcome back. We have got Chied Zashonywa. She's a corporate lawyer. She's discussing with us in terms of the new changes that have been brought about by the new companies uh, act. 
Now, Chiedza, I would want the entrepreneurs and business people who are on this platform to benefit from what we are discussing. From your own understanding, what is the best type of company which maybe startups can go for? Okay. Uh, the best benefit I think I would want to give, without specifying the type of company per se, is that if uh, a person is to start up a company, per, a person or persons, if they are to start up a company, uh, they have the benefit of being uh, covered in terms of liability. Because the company is taken as, a, as an entity on its own, with its own rights, it can enter into agreements, it can own properties uh, on its own. So now you can have a situation where you have a vehicle of a company and you can safeguard um, it be the assets of the company or entity and you don't have to have them entangled with your own assets as an individual. So let's say a day comes where you enter into an agreement and there is need for payments to be made. In certain circumstances, not even in certain circumstances, the company is the one that is liable because it's a separate person from yourself. Uh, as long as you act in terms of the act and there's no lifting or piercing of the corporate veil, if you actually act and you leave the company to act as an individual, then you are safeguarded in terms of if there's a debt that then arises. It's not your debt. It's the debt of the company. But now, going back to your question, looking at the various vehicles uh, that are stated in the Act, I believe, personally, it depends, with, it depends with the type of business that a person has. But if you're going to be an individual, let's say I want to start a business, I don't have someone else uh, who I can drop in, I want to start a company. At least the private business corporation allows for one individual, at least one individual to actually be a member of, um, of that business and register it. So now it's not an issue. Then you have to look for someone else who comes to join you. You can already start that up. And you can even do it for up to 20 people. So it really does cover for your small to medium business enterprises. And I think that will actually deal and uh, assist uh, entrepreneurs who are starting up, who might not have as many people uh, to be members uh, or to join, and you can you don't have to wait for other people to come through. You can actually just use that vehicle and start up your own company. Thank you very much for that. Now, there's been a concern in the past where a lot of African countries have been blamed for taking too long to register companies. Does the new act enshrine or recognize the need to expedite company registration? Yes, uh, as I'd said before, the, the, the need for the new act was to at least elevate the legislations to at least a global standard. So now you have a situation where the act provides for an establishment or the establishment of an electronic registry. So now it hasn't yet uh, come into effect. It will come into effect on a date that is going to be announced by the registrar. Uh, but then at least it goes to digitalization because we can't run away from the fact that we are in a day and age where uh, everything is computerized and also the filing, the registration, facilitation of uh, companies the process will be made faster and easier based if there is digitalization. So it's actually a positive step towards uh, ensuring that at least uh, as an African country, we are at par in terms of the global uh, requirements or global standards, so to speak. My final question, Chiedza, in this uh, uh, show now focuses on the roles of directors. In the past, there's been a lot of talk in terms of what is it that directors do, both in terms of their liability, responsibility, and or supervisory roles. What does the new act say in general when it comes to directors' involvement? Okay. Uh, 
Um, the first thing I would say is that directors owe a fiduciary duty towards the companies to act in the best interest of companies uh, and not of themselves, to act in the best interest of the company uh, that they're director of. So that's the first thing. But before the new act, you had mostly the common law uh, stating the duties and uh, liabilities of directors. But now you have some of those duties incorporated in terms of the act. They owe a duty of loyalty to the company. They also uh, they owe a duty of actually being transparent. And if there any if there is any conflict of interest, they owe a duty to disclose that conflict of interest. So now what you have is a new act that intensifies the liability of directors and causes heavy penalties on the part of directors or members that are found wanting. So what they're trying to do is eliminate the situation where uh, you have directors acting in their own interest uh, or using companies as a vehicle, outer ego, we call it an outer ego, of the individual. And the company is no longer a separate legal entity, but you have someone driving the company, driving it to debt. So for purposes of corporate governance, good corporate governance, the act is really intensifying the liability of directors. And even uh, unbecoming behavior of members and now such behavior is now being penalized in terms of the new act. And they're expected to act in the best interest of the company. Because back, I won't say back in the days, I'll just say people were taking advantage of companies. A person would know that they don't want to pay money, they want to scam someone, they know that if they open a company, uh, they can always hide behind the company and not have to be liable when the day of reckoning comes. But now you have the new act that's saying, okay, you know what, we're going to look at the conduct of the members and the conduct of the directors and see if such conduct is at par or acceptable. If it is not acceptable, then uh, they'll be penalized. Yes, uh, once again, thanks very much for the information that you have always shared with our viewers when it comes to the legal brief that we always have got weekly. To our viewers across the globe, we have always benefited from Chedza. For those that may have particular subjects to do with business that they would want us to tackle on this platform, may you please include them on our comment section. Always remember to subscribe and like and watch for our next shows. Cheza, once again, thank you for coming onto the platform. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. <laughs>